file new and it's a little red button just like an old-fashioned tape deck record can't really hear it that well Gonna pause it now until it records the whole song. <clears throat> okay, um, seven minutes and 45 seconds have passed. The song is over. I've stopped recording, and you can see the wave file, all the silence here, how it's over. So, the first thing you gotta do is remove that silence because you, of course, don't want it'll make the file bigger unnecessarily and that sort of thing and you don't want the extra that's just the built-in speaker here so we just highlight it uh, and delete I always leave a little bit but never too much see there's like a faint little sound there also let's go to the beginning when we first started going to be some little extra beginning blank space there. Like I said, leave a tiny bit. Some guys uh, will put their files through all these sound processors to eliminate noise and get rid of little clicks and stuff. But um, I read them like, uh, you know, someone as famous as uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff. He's against that. I kind of agree with him. Um, it gets rid of the true vinyl sound, and you know, you want to, you want it to sound how it's supposed to sound. And uh, what else you got to do is doing something called normalize. Um, you know, I recorded it a little bit lower. You don't want it to over peak. It'll make the sound of the song seem kind of like garbled. Um, so let's edit and select all and somewhere in here should be something called normalize um, here we go it's under effect and normalize remove any DC offset normalize maximum sure okay now sometimes it will increase the volume or decrease the volume if your levels are too high. Um, like I said, you don't want to go too high on the mixer. When we first started, you saw how the little waves were like all the way up to the top and that means it's too loud. Just like the old days when you're recording onto a cassette. Uh, maybe even some of you aren't from the old days like I am. But you used to record your mixes on a little tape deck and if you had your levels too high, and we're watching your levels on your mixer as you're going you'll uh, you know have this horrible sounding mix so it looks like it's finished and now all we do is file save export as mp3 and let's save it on my desktop so I can find it easy and this is the um, Why You Treat Me So Bad Club Mix. So I'll just call it Club Mix for now. Club Mix. Save. And it, uh, yeah, here you go. It asks me all the track information, all this kind of stuff. So, why you treat me so bad? Now, sometimes it's funny, like on the sleeve here, it's got, why do you treat me so bad with a question mark. On the 12 inch, it doesn't. It just says, why do you treat me so bad. To me, I don't know. It, some of these things aren't a big deal, but when you're looking at your songs in iTunes, Tractor, Serato, whatever, and sometimes having the full name can really help. So I'll do the question mark, why not? And this is the club mix. 
this is Club Nouveau. Club N O U V E A U album. This is the Why You Treat Me So Bad 12 inch. Track number one. Year. I always got to put year in my stuff. Um, sometimes you're doing a 70 set and you want to keep it going and you can't like think of the next song on the top of your head. Uh, it always helps. You never know. And this is 1986. Wow, that long ago. I was 16 years old. So 1986. Genre, I guess that's technically R&B. Sometimes these things can be hard too. Uh, where's R? Where's R? R, rap, reggae. Jeez, there's a million. Well, actually, I guess they don't have RB. It just says RB, not R and B. I'll change that later. Here's RB uh, comments. I always like to put my little comments so I know my vinyl recordings versus originally digital, digital files. Hey, Dad. I put my little vinyl recording. You don't have to put comments, it's up to you. Okay. And. I noticed it didn't ask me what sound quality I wanted to save it as because I think earlier in my preferences, I'll double check that because um, I used to save all my vinyl as 192 bit. Uh, I've come across a lot of other vinyl jocks who are digital jocks converting vinyl and stuff and a lot of them just prefer the highest. I kind of don't hear the sound difference above 192. 128 you definitely hear that sound quality. If you're pressed for hard disk space Maybe you do want to go just to 192, but never go down to 128. That's when you can really tell the sound quality difference. Uh, I'm going to double check that it'll be a 320 bit. Let's see, under file, I believe preferences somewhere. Audacity, preferences. Um, File format, quality, no, I think maybe it already has that automatically, I'm not sure, but find our file here on our desktop where we saved it, double click it, it'll be loaded into iTunes. Final touches for me are easily adding the BPM. Okay, apparently this uh, little tool I got says it's 98 beats per minute. That's a little free tool I found called iTunes BPM uh, beats per minute it helps you uh, when you're like struggling through all these you know that you're in this certain tempo and you're in this vibe and you're out of ideas of what song to play next um, just what works for me is finding a same a song that's got the same speed just kinda keep the floor going uh, so now we can add it on our iPhone or iPod use it in Serato if you use Serato now you can use it in Tractor like I do whatever so um, hope this helps you if you don't if you've never tried recording vinyl onto mp3 before and uh, as they say in the UK um, practice and enjoy thanks for watching okay something else that I've discovered that I missed let's uh try this here but like I said to you always want the best sound quality and audacity there's preferences and then uh, file formats notice down here I don't know if you can see that mp3 export 
lame, it's got a lame thing built in. Uh, bit rate 320. You have a few choices here. You never want to go below 192. Especially if you're DJing in the club and stuff and over a high quality sound system. Um, like I said, uh, thanks for watching. Practice and enjoy.